once. I saw a WhatsApp video of a lady who was sleeping. And even though she was sleeping, she would wake up at a particular point in the night, around 1 a.m. And she would go to the kitchen, make food, clean the house. As if she was fully really awake. So one day the other said, ah, this people is abnormal. And started videoing her. And he videoed her exactly as she was doing. I was saying she was awake. And she wasn't awake. She was completely asleep. She went to the kitchen, prepared the food, cleaned the house, and went back to bed. And she wasn't even awake. She was asleep. She was called sleepwalking. So spirits can do all kinds of things. When they possess your body, they will use it anyhow. Anyway, so for in this body that we have, we do what we grow. Designed to be clothed with the house we give them because the celestial body is not like this body. The celestial body doesn't have cancer, doesn't have hypertension, doesn't have diabetes, doesn't experience all this pain, all these terrible things we're going through. You see? So, whilst we're in this body, we grow up because we go through many trials and tribulations. I say, one day, Lord, I'm going to leave this body and be clothed with the heavenly body. You know, all those people who have been to heaven, most of them don't want to come back to this earthly body. In fact, the earthly body to them is like a stinking rack. That's what we describe it. Having been in the celestial body, now they're told to come back, they always resist. Because the look on the earthly body is very dirty, very unclean, heavy, just like the worst thing ever, because they've experienced the heavenly body. So, so we grow, we want to be clothed with a heavenly body because with this earthly body is full of trials and tribulations. Romans 8 23. If being that clothed, we shall not be found naked. You see? Revelation 3 18. So our spirit is inside our body. Your real person is not your body. So there's no point abusing people, somebody's. Uh, is ugly, someone is this or that. No, the real person is inside them. You can't see the real person, but that's what's controlling them. So you say somebody is beautiful, somebody is ugly, all this thing. it's just a waste of time. It's just like put on a coat. Okay, I put on a coat, and I put on a bigger coat, and I put on a go coat. That's the way it is. Your real person is inside that coat. Go on, Romans 8 23, Revelation 3 18. Romans 3 23. Yes. Not only that. But we also who have the first fruits mm -hmm. of the spirit, even mm -hmm. we ourselves grown yes. within ourselves, yeah. eagerly waiting for the adoption, mm -hmm. the redemption of mm -hmm. our body. Yes, the redemption of our body. Okay. Revelation 3:18. I thank you to buy from you mm -hmm. gold refined in the fire. Yes. That you may be rich. Mm -hmm. And white garments mm -hmm. that you may be clothed. Yes. That the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. That is it. And I your eyes, mm -hmm. I saw, mm -hmm. that you, you see. You see, when, when we wear this white garment, people don't know why, and they don't understand. They, they, they just think that, oh, they just wear white garment in church. Uh, they don't know. You know. This white garment is supposed to be symbolic of the righteousness of Christ. That is what it symbolizes, represents. You never see an angel of God in black or red or any green or any color like that. No. If you ever see an angel of God or just by himself, it's going to be perfect white. Because it represents purity, it represents light. These are the things of God. God is never dark or black. Never. And that's why we shouldn't use black clothes here. Because they are in a dark kingdom, yes, you can be using black without their own uniform. But we in the light, we always wear white. So, uh, I told you the story of a woman who, when Jesus Christ came to, to Babbage in the late 50s, they were having an end of year service, and they should have an end of year service at Babbage. At the beginning of this show, that was what happened. At the Christmas service, always at back on the beach, you know. And I watched her, of course, was leading this. And Jesus Christ appeared to them as a fisherman. You know, and uh, you know, he talked to them. They all saw him. He wasn't hidden. This was recorded in the papers. And as they came on the scene, they saw whales coming to bow down, the water bowing down before him. All this was happening. And uh, you know, 
Jesus Christ asked this woman, well, God just did this, why was she naked? She couldn't answer the question. But when we were praying, Jesus Christ disappeared. And then after the service, went to ask the pastor, why did he ask me? Why was I naked? And the pastor told him it was because you are not wearing your white garments. So, in spiritual realm, you can see you are completely naked. Why? Because they can see everything about you. But when you wear this white, it covers all your faults, all your sinfulness. See, that's the whole purpose of this. But of course, people abuse it. So, for we and this tabernacle, this house, this flesh, this body, we are bodies. Not that we will be unclothed, not that we don't want to be without a body, but we want that heavenly body, which is light. We can go through, in a second, we can go from Lagos to, to, uh, to London. And like Jesus Christ appeared, doors will not stop him. We go through doors, that kind of body we want to be clothed in. It's not, it's not limited by time, not limited by your efforts. You know, here yeah, you get tired, right, with this body. No matter how much you try, <laughs> your body will get you have to sleep. But the only body is not like that. There's no tiredness. So it's like very, very the best garments. Now, so he who had done this is God, who also given us the deposit of the spirits. So God did this for us and given us the deposits. So we who have the deposit of the Holy Spirit in us, we're able to do that, we're able to hope, we're able to look towards that. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you will not be thinking of things like that. You all will be thinking about everything on this earth. Enjoy yourself, get as much money as you can. You will be thinking of heaven, which is a spiritual destination for those who serve God. For those who don't, of course, it's hellfire. Okay, therefore, we are always confident because we have the Holy Spirit in us. That deposit is leading us, is telling us, is preparing us for our heavenly abode. We are confident. That even though we are come in this body, we are absent from the law. In other words, you and I, as children of God, our aspiration is to be with Jesus. Now, you cannot be with Jesus with this same body. No, it's not possible. For you to be with Jesus, is, you've got to be like Him. You've got to be clothed like Him. You cannot go to heaven with a heavenly body. No, you are, you are this earthly body will become dust. And if your money is buried, give it at the most. One week, that body has become dust. Maybe maximum ten days. Is if you search for it, you will not see. You only see the bones. The flesh is become dust. The and the worms are eating it. Is so. When you think of that, then you have to question why do we spend so much money beautifying ourselves and do all these things doing to our bodies when it's just dust. Really, that's all we are, dust. It's all dust. In three days' time, this boy, this Miss Wolf or Mr. Wolf, you, 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 are, you are going, you are looking at so much, will become dust. So why are you killing yourself? Why are somebody to do so? Spending thousands of dollars to make up, to look beautiful? No, vanity. It's all vanity. It's all dust. Why are you beautifying dust? Something that will become dust in three days. What's, what's the big deal? about it, you see, so that we know that even though we are in this body, one day we shall be with Jesus. Let's go to um, Romans 8.24, Hebrews 11 verse 1, uh, Romans 8.24, we'll read Hebrews after the next verse. So this is our hope, the aspiration to be with Jesus. Well, if you can't be with Jesus, we are living a rebellious life against God. You will not qualify to be with him. One, Romans 8 24. Romans 8 24. Sickness in it, no pain in it, no nothing like that. 
That's what we're hoping for. We can't see it, but we're hoping and looking for it. For we walk by faith, not by sight. What does it mean to walk by faith, not by sight? Hmm. If you walk, it's not referring to physical walking. It's referring to your daily life. In other words, how do you live your life? Do you live your life every day? The way you talk, the way you eat, the way you walk, the way you dress. Do you do that by faith in God or by what you see? Most of us live by what we see, not by faith in God. See, if you are living by faith in God, then if sickness strikes you, you would rebuke it, you would ignore it, you would live as if you are not sick. You will not be complaining every 10 minutes. You will say, how are you? You say, I'm fine. Even though you have a terrible headache. How is your leg today? Oh, my leg is fine. And one day that leg will become fine. But if all you're doing is speaking, oh, I'm sick, oh, I have pain in my back, that is what's going to continue in your life. That means you are walking by sight, what you can see. You see? But if, you, if you're walking by faith, believe that God has healed you, God has delivered you, then you, you behave as if that's it. Even though you still have the signal, you ignore it. You say, no. This is just a waste of time. No, I know Jesus has healed me. You sickness, you're a stranger in my body, you must live. Have you not had the story of a woman who, who went to a crusade and she, she had the gospel and she believed, she went home and prayed. She had a big goit in her neck. She believed that God had healed her. And the next Sunday she gave up, got up in church, said, I want to thank God for healing me. God has healed me of this goiter. Everybody was looking at her neck. The goiter was still there. Yeah. Is this man okay? She's giving a testimony that God has healed her, but you can still see the goiter. Nobody wanted to talk, everybody was in embarrass. She would get up maybe once a month and give a testimony. After a few months, she slept and the goiter was completely gone. No surgery, nothing. It just left because she stood on the faith that she had been healed. See, because we can't see, we don't believe, this is the problem. You know, that's what Jesus Christ told uh, uh, Thomas. He said, Thomas, Blessed are those who believe and not seen. So you only believe because you see me. You know, when they when Jesus appeared, the other two, Thomas was in there and they told him that, oh, Jesus Christ appeared. said, no, you must say, no, 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 I don't believe it. Until I see him and I put my hands in his sight and I put my hands in the where they put the nails, I won't believe. Can you imagine? That's an apostle, Jesus Christ has said it. Complete unbelief. So after seven days, Jesus appeared and said, Thomas, come here. Come and put your hands in my sight. See, when he was saying that, he knew Jesus was hearing. Jesus hears everything you see. He said, Come and put your hands in my sight and in my thumbs. And Thomas said, Oh God, I'm so sorry. Lord, my Lord, my God. He said, You believe because you see. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. You see, we don't believe because we don't see. And part of the reason we don't have the truth in us, the Bible in us, because if you have the word of God in you, you won't believe what's impossible. For instance, if somebody you know has cancer, and you have the faith that you can pray for that person and be healed of cancer, that person will be healed. And you'll be surprised. But you say, ah, cancer, me, eh? And me, get hmm, I can't help. But you are denying yourself because you don't believe it. See? So we must live our lives every day according to what God has done for us. The Bible says that we were healed. Jesus Christ carried away our sorrows. By his stripes, we were healed. In first Peter. If that is the case, if you have already been healed by what he did on the cross, why is do you have diabetes? Why do you have cancer? Why do you have all diseases? Because the is testing you. So this one, I want to see how much faith he has. He is the one preaching. He's the one singing, right? Uh -huh. Go and put cancer on the woman now. Let's see how much your faith is now. But if you're a warrior, say, oh, Satan, if you're a liar, you're not going to put this on my body. No, no, no. I'm not going to receive it. Jesus Christ already said I was killed on the cross. It's because of my sickness. That's why I was beaten for my sickness. You sickness, you get out of my body right now. And you did as if you are healed. Even though 
people were having symptoms, even that time, tell me even the worst. But eventually, what happened? I think it was a And he was saying, How did she do it? I was here telling her cancer, say, for cancer. How did she? I don't understand it. She stood on her faith. Cancer is a name. You can overcome cancer if you really believe it. There is no disease that you just cannot heal. So it just depends on your faith. There is no problem actually that cannot be used Christ is finished on the cross. He says, just speak to your mountain and the mountain shall be cast into the sea. What mountain? The mountain of your problems before you. That tribulation, that difficulty in your family, in your place of work, with your, with your, with your siblings, whatever it is, is in your hand the solution. To pray against it, cast it off. That's only if you have the faith. If you don't have the faith, then you can't do it. So that will just be kicking you everywhere because you know this one. You know? But somebody who has faith, he knows that we're going to cast him off. So we are confident and say, so we must all walk. Hebrews 11 verse 1. We all have to walk by faith and not by sight. So whatever you're going to believe that Jesus Christ already did it for you on the cross, invoke that power and no matter how what you're feeling, continue to believe it and you'll see the result in your life. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Yes. Now, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, mm -hmm. the evidence of things not seen. Yes. For by it the elders obtain the good report. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence not seen. That means if you have faith that you are healed, you will not immediately see the evidence in your body. If you have faith that this mountain will be removed, you will not see the evidence immediately. It's going to be later that you see the evidence. But you believe that that substance, that healing, that deliverance, that uh, promotion, you believe it and you hold on to it, even though you don't see it. You just believe in your heart. I'm going to buy a car before this year ends. And in your mind, you have that kind of mind. And you keep on believing that before the end of this year, I'm going to have a car. No matter what, I'm going to have a car. Believe me, you'll get that car. It won't happen immediately, but it will happen as you have believed it before the end of the year, you will get that car. Or it may be a house, whatever it is. So the substance, you see it, you have in your mind, but no evidence. That is faith. But most of us go, oh, I cannot believe for a car. You know how much I'm money? Eh? Me? Ah. I don't know. Hmm? Well, maybe God can do it. No, no, no. That is unbelief. God wants you to challenge him for something that nobody would even think of. You know, when you begin to think of natural things that human beings can solve for you, God is not impressed. So, I, no, if I do this, you, you know, you, your friends can give you a car. Anybody can, that's not a big deal for human beings. You challenge him something great that no human being can do. For instance, you can say that I want to be the president of Canada. Or, US. Some of you know that in the natural is almost impossible. Say, God, I believe you for this. And hey, now God says, now, nah, come and sit down. We are now talking. Now you know who your God is. Because for you to think that, you must believe in me. If you don't believe in me, there's no way you can even think of that. Because you think ah, this is impossible for human being. But if you believe in me, a supernatural being, then you can think of supernatural things. So, he said, wherefore we labor, whether present or absent, we may what? Accepted of the Lord. For we are confident and willing to be absent from the body and to be present for the Lord. You and I, our aspiration is to be with Jesus. Because in this life, we are going through so many problems, so many tribulations, attacks, sickness, disappointment, failure, all these things we are going through. See, a true Christian, a child of God, can never feel comfortable in this life. Because everything you're going through, you'll be saying, Ah, Lord, one day I'll be with you in heaven. One day I get to rest from all the troubles. One day I get from these trials. You see? 
But if you're not going anywhere, then you feel comfortable in this world because this is that's the end for you. But if you're a child of God, you're going to go through things that you, every day you hope in one day, Jesus, I'm going to see you. This is not my home. I'm a pilgrim. I'm going home. I'm going home one day. That's what you're thinking. See? So for we, whether we labor, present or absent, we will be accepted of him. Because we know that when we just we have to live our lives in a holy way to be accepted of Jesus. If you are not planning to be with Jesus, then there's no point in being holy or righteous. Or you are deceiving yourself. If you think you're going to be with Jesus and you are living a rebellious life, doing whatever you want, you know, killing, doing all these little things, then you are know, wasting your time. You better just go and enjoy yourself now. There's no point coming to joy or there's no, no, you are just fooling yourself, you are deceiving yourself. And many people in the church are doing that. Come to church, you're very wise to turn about behind, when they leave the church, they are worse than the devil himself. Also, uh, people are fooling themselves. They are also enjoying themselves. I know that at least I enjoyed myself. I, I, I know I'm going to go to hell. Yes. At least I wonder. <laughs> I will gain something because I enjoy myself on this side. But for you to deny yourself partially and not fully, I think you're going to go to heaven, <laughs> then you're just wasting your time. So, but we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. See? That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. See? We must all appear. Every one of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That we may receive a reward for what we have done in our bodies. So even though this body is flesh, this is what is going to judge you, what you do in this body. It's not what you do in your spiritual body. So we are very careful because everything you do in this body, one day you're going to stand before him and all your sins will appear before him. So those sins will accuse you, the body will accuse you. Say, once on the earth, this is what you did with me. You are sleeping around with different men, smoking, drinking alcohol, cheating, masturbating, with your eyes, your eyes will say yes. With your mother, you are always looking at pornography, bad movies. Your mouth will say yes. You use your mouth to cause people to gossip. Your ears will say yes. You kept on listening to gossip. All those who were accusing you as you stand before Jesus Christ. I mean, you can't deny it because it's the truth. So we must all remember that. Romans 14, verse 10. That we must all appear. And Galatians 6, verse 7. Galatians 6 verse 8, Romans 14, 10, Galatians 6, 7, and Ephesians 6, 8. This will be published in front of all the churches. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Romans 14, 10. Yes. But why do you judge your brother? Mm -hmm. Or why do you show contempt, contempt yes. for your brother? Mm -hmm. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. That's it. Go on. And then uh, go to uh, um, Ephesians 6 8, Galatians 6 7. Right. Galatians 6 7. 7, yeah. Do not be deceived. Yes. God is not mocked. Mm -hmm. For whatever a man sows, yes. that he will also reap. That is it. <laughs> In other words, we cannot be leading a rebellious and worthy life and expect to go to heaven. And many people are doing that right now. If you ask them, say, oh, I'll go to heaven. Eh? You're going to heaven? Oh, yes. You are committing abortion right and left, sleeping all kinds of men, doing witchcraft, killing people, and you say you're going to heaven? <laughs> you're fooling yourself. Go on. Ephesians 6, 8. 6, 8. Yes. Knowing that whatever good anyone does, yes. he will receive the same from mm. God, mm -hmm. whether he be asleep or mm -hmm. free. Mm -hmm. That's it. Whatever good and the same thing, whatever bad you do, you're going to receive the same thing. May we always reap from good fruit, not from bad fruits. So that's it. That is the message of tonight. May God very sing deep in our spirits, may convict us, may change us from inside out.
May we qualify for that celestial body. Amen. Let's be with Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.